Jeremy here. Um, we're back again. Going to be doing the second map for the Dragon Soul Isles, which is a one shot I'll be building with you. Um, I plan to run it next week with my players. Um, last video, we built the top of the mountain in Incarnate using their beta uh, battle map builder. And we're going to now jump in and build out the second layer, which will be the core dungeon layer. Uh, that our players will be exploring as they're trying to get from the top of the mountain um, down into uh, where the metallic dragons are guarding the eggs of the gemstone dragons. So I'm going to jump right into it and uh, let's build a map. So again, first thing I'm doing is I'm stripping off the top layer. I'll be working with the background layer for most of our adding of texture. just um, a personal preference. A lot of people may like working with the top layer, um, but I find that, especially if I'm going to have multiple levels in the dungeon, I like to have that layering effect. So this gives me the option to add in a second layer and stairs as we go through, if that's something that we'd like to do. And we may just in this map too. So um, throw on our grid and let's grab the texture we were looking at before for the cave, which is the darker sort of dirt texture. We want to give the impression that we're now underground, that the light system, uh, that the sun is not visible down here unless you have dark vision or unless you have uh, your own source of light. Seeing is going to be very difficult. Okay, I'll save time. Let's increase the size of our, of our brush. And there we go. That is one fine pile of dirt. But one of the things we talked about in the last video was the idea that this might be a volcano system. So let's do something really fun and let's add either a lava or a lava like effect to it. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a, a lava texture. I'm going to drop the opacity on that, so we can do an overlayer. That's still that's still too much. We want to have a very low opacity so that the dirt's still visible, but it has sort of the feel of it being a, a volcanic environment. See, I like this a lot because with this particular texture, it does give the impression that while the lava is present, while it's a hotter environment, you're, you're literally in the volcano, uh, you're not necessarily in any risk of stepping directly in the lava, that the players can still traverse the dungeon um, despite this being this way, uh, which is perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to f determine the point that the players would have dropped down into the dungeon. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to place a stone slab. And this is going to be the location that the players are dropped from the top of the well. So we'll make that a 3x3 three three in the center of the map. So the players who go down through the well end up landing on this um, this rock here. Perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is we're going to pick a wall system. So we're going to come in here to our items. We're going to select wall by search and find one that really fits the dungeon feel. And I think, I think we're going to go with the stone wall here, which gives us the option to come in and, and present these anywhere we'd like. Um, I think what I'm going to do is pick one of the smaller ones. I'm going to drop back down to 100% here. You can actually type that in here. And that's perfect. And so what we can do with that is we can drop them in. And as you see, we line them up. Uh, we will actually be 
we can zoom it with our inner, inner mouse wheel. And if you hold space, I didn't know this for the longest time, but if you hold space, it creates this hand icon. If you click, you can actually drag yourself around the map. So it's a great way to be able to zoom in and do detail work uh, with the map system here in Incarnate. So if we do that, then we have the ability to do the border of the map. Um, especially for especially for dungeons, I like doing uh, a border right away so that players know sort of where those boundaries are at. And less comes into question, especially when you're using Roll20 and you're using any of the lighting uh, system features. It's always a nice thing to be able to have that. I'm going to hold shift so that I get a nice clean. And there we go. Come into here. And again, we just continue to line that up. My players have been, you know, yearning for a dragon fight. And one of the one of the interesting things about Dungeons and Dragons is that despite the name dragons and the names, sometimes you go a long time without actually fighting a dragon and there are, you know, even many groups that, you know, you'll talk to them and they'll tell you they haven't they haven't fought a dragon yet, or they may have fought one or two dragons, and there's still these legendary fearsome things. So with this module I wanted to give my players sort of that opportunity to be able to take on that fearsome fearsome foe. Uh, in a very real way. The gemstone dragons are really interesting as well. and um, I'm not going to be implementing them, I think, in the same way that they were implemented in 2nd edition. Um, there's some cool breath weapons, like uh, the amethyst dragon has a paralysis effect, which is really, really fun. Um, probably going to still borrow that uh, so anatomically they'll be very much the same but I think that in terms of um, in terms of philosophy in terms of function I'm going to give them much more of a, a religious role in the world so that you know while they are very very uh, rare they're also revered by the dragon kind themselves which is why the metallic dragons the good dragons have taking it upon themselves to become the custodians of these eggs, become their, their guardians and protectors. And so let's build out the last of this wall set. And perfect. Look at that. So now that we have that, we can begin pl plotting the dungeon uh, and the dungeon rooms around that. And one of the things I recommend is even if you're working with a digital tool like this, to take something like a uh, notebook with graph paper and just sketch the design that you want to have. There are a couple of good uh, dungeon generators online that can also generate rooms for you in the layout of a dungeon. I think, uh, you know, both ways are perfectly fine. It really comes down to what you want to do. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build out. Um, I already preset the uh, the room, so we're just going to build it out based on that layer design and uh, go from there. So we're going to start with a room around where the players arrive, and we'll build from there. What's really nice about the coloring differences between the items that we're adding here on the battle map and the um, the background texture is how muted the background colors are. So that the foreground really does pop for the players and that becomes what they're focusing on. Especially when you start playing with dynamic lighting features in Roll20, that becomes a very useful thing. Uh, I think what I'm gonna actually do is just drop this guy in here. Um, if you press control and the down arrow you can change the uh, layering order of elements as you add them to the map so we can do that and um, 
you know, we were aware that that's there like that because we saw it happen, but I guarantee you anybody coming into this map for the first time, they're not going to notice that that's not part of the same wall. Um, so right there, we have the players arriving. Now, one of the things I want to do is put a chest in here because as part of the dungeon design, I have a trapped chest in the very first room. Um, kind of an evil move, but... In my mind, it's a fun thing to tempt the players with greed early on. So it's, you're hunting treasure, you were hired by a treasure hunter, but the treasure is something truly wonderful that you're looking for. Um, something very rare in the form of these dragons. But what about actual riches? What about the things that a lot of adventurers go for? That, that sweet, sweet adventuring juice, so in the form of gold. Right here, we're gonna we're gonna put that chest in there. Um, when it opens, it's gonna trigger a trap. Uh, it's gonna be a poison gas trap. But on the inside of the chest, once uh, the players survive that first assault, uh, they're going to find a note telling them to go back. So there's no actual riches in the chest. Rather, this is something that was set up by the guardian dragons. Something meant to send people who were invading this sacred place home, send them packing. And so now we jump back in. What I love about this is it keeps all of our recently used textures right here, so I can literally jump right back in. Um, if you want to use the walls of the same size to be adjusted for before, if you click one and then click back um, on the tool here, uh, it automatically adjusts it back to the right size. So we can just jump right in and continue building our map. And that's what we're going to do. So I will put that on the top there for both of these. I think that'll look better. And there we go. So the players will have a have to travel single file going out of either side of this map, this room. But here, it opens up to a wider room right off the bat. And I think that that's, oh, let me double click again. I think that's important so that in terms of strategy, you're not always putting your players in a position where they have to go single file. This is going to actually be a combat room when the players arrive. There's going to be a couple of methods hanging out here uh, waiting for people to, to come through. Um, not a part of the dragon's plan per se, but uh, the methods are smart and they know that this dungeon attracts treasure hunters treasure hunters means if they are patient enough food and who doesn't love food all right and so I'm actually going to I think grab for this chamber lingering fires. I think that might be the shape I want. I think the circular shape would be fine. But what I want to do is place it here and again send it to the bottom layer so it just looks like there is fire in each of the corners. And that's where the four methods are going to trigger out from. <coughs> so we're going to have from the fires, especially if the players go to investigate them, they'll see shapes dancing in the flame, and that's where the methods are going to leap out of to attack the players. So I can jump back here, grab my walls again, and we continue on our merry way. With the dynamic lighting, the players are only going to be able to see in the dungeon as far as line of sight would let them see, and as far as things like their own dark vision would let them see. And so we're really going to use that to our advantage in some of the next rooms.
Um, one of the things players may ask themselves along the way too is, well, what's the purpose of this? Um, this this or this ruin? What? Who created it? And why did they create it? What was ultimately the goal of having this exist here? And so, um, in this case, it's always been um, a sacred temple uh, of the dragon folk in the, in the Dragon Soul Isles. It was a temple designed before to contain their treasure, as we know. Dragons can be very covetous creatures, creatures that desire to protect the gold that they acquire and, and to acquire more of that gold. Um, and so it's been repurposed, but that was the original purpose of this dungeon. So you'll have things like hallways that seemingly go off into nowhere, uh, whereas these hallways are actually going to be filled with scything blade traps, um, which we're going to prep in roll 20. Um, so I'll show you how we can, we can make those appear to pop and attack the players. Uh, when the time comes to bring the map into Roll20. Uh, but yeah, so so just like in the pyramids um, in Egypt, uh, there are chambers that were created purely to trap potential robbers. Um, in the same vein, we have these here, um, designed to foil anybody who would try to steal the dragon's gold. Uh, in their wisdom, the metallic dragons repurposed this so that they could protect the eggs of the gemstone dragon. So here we have our first 2x2, two two, uh, or 10-foot hallway. And there's going to be an opening here. Now, this is going to be interesting. I need to see if we have a stamp for bunks. I know there's a couple of beds. The mat might even be the right one to use, but let's see what we have for beds. Yeah, you know what? I like the mat for that, so that's what we're going to use here. That's way too big. <laughs> what we have is a series of bunks in here for cobalts to use. Oh. Hello, Google. I was not talking to you. I'm not sure I understand. Or is that Siri? Siri thought I was talking to her. Isn't that awesome? All right. Now let's move the beds in so that there's a little laneway between them, but not much. I think. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll hug the right side line for each of these. Starting here. And for what I'm using this for, it's perfectly fine if they go a little bit under the stoneway here. Um, there's going to be a lip that hangs over anyway, so uh, perfectly usable still. And then we're going to grab a couple of chests, um, less fancy looking ones, ones that equipment would have been stored in, not, not treasures. So let's see what we have. Perfect. So this is more like a trunk. Um, and there'll just be one at the end of every one of these beds. And so um, some of the kobolds who would serve the dragons and guard this place, this would be the bunkhouse that they would... Uh, live inside of at night. Uh, one of the th reasons why I, I tend to add things like this, especially if there are creatures who are guarding a dungeon, is um, comes back to my days playing in second edition. There were some old modules where uh, in the dungeon delves they always accounted for the accommodations of the guardian monsters. and I always found that a really nice detail to have. Alright, so now we come to another room. I'm gonna flip this around. We'll do another. Yeah, perfect. I like that. And there we go. So this room down here is actually going to be a library and stock room. So this would be a place where 
they kobolds would be afforded space to study but also store their weapons so we're gonna grab a bookshelf and uh, that's a gigantic bookshelf if you look at the size of those books the books would be larger than the kobolds themselves and then we'll we'll drop that below and we'll put a second one right next to it and so you have that and one of the cool things I think I'll add for my players is, you know, when we build out the specifics for this dungeon um, together, a way for them to uh, study these books. You know, well, what could you possibly learn making something like an investigation check or an arcana check? Maybe if there's a spellcaster, we could put a spell book on one of these with some lost draconic lore. Uh, maybe some spells that are more dragon themed in nature. Um, and then, of course, we want some kind of a shelf. Let's see what we have for options here. Uh, maybe a, oh, a torture rack. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, well, you know, again, the eyes see what you want them to see or what you direct them to see. So maybe if we got a wooden table. Perfect. You know, very easily from a bird's eye view, that is the top of a shelf and if that is explained to players this is no longer a table but rather this is the bird's eye view of a weapons shelf so what you have here is a multi-function room that's both library and armory um, a place for kobolds to come and study and enhance themselves both in terms of their physical strength but also um, you know, I have this different on the map, but I think what I might do, just for the symmetry of it, is have this be a larger opening. Yeah, I like that better. Uh, but yeah, so you have a way for kobolds to come in and, and study and learn, um, and enhance both their mental powers and their, their physical. And I think... I want to put a couple of tables. I like the circular table idea. Shrink that just a little bit. Yeah, what we'll do is we'll put that table here. I think we'll put one more table here. Yeah, you know what I'll do is I'll move it closer to the bookshelf on both sides. And that's just a place where studying could happen, that they could spread out books and whatnot. So we'll get tiny chairs. Maybe stools. That looks a little too close to the the table maybe maybe a chair yeah we'll do wooden chairs so click and we'll use again control and the down arrow key to send that to the background um, it recalls that so when we put the next one it's already there and again we can do the same thing on the other side um, once you have an object selected, you can use the arrow keys to nudge it and move it just a tiny bit across the map, and I find that works really well. Uh, so just like that, we have chairs and tables set up on both sides. That's going to be a lot of fun, and now we're going to do uh, a desk. Probably not what they would expect to see in a place like this and I think that sometimes shock value on that's really really valuable too um, you know would player characters necessarily expect to see in the middle of this volcanic dungeon a room with books yeah maybe but probably not as much as they would expect to see a room with weapons or um, you know other forms of ruins and we'll keep in line with the same so we got the same kind of chair there and then we'll grab some books for detail and throw those on top we have a couple different options so we'll just do like a couple of and again uh, hit control up and I'll turn that just a little to the side to give it that casual reader feel we'll put an open book on the main desk here you know someone was recently reading it and I think we'll do a green book over here on the side and uh, yeah red book 
There we go. So in terms of detail, I think that came out really nicely. So we'll zoom out and there we go. So the first quarter of our dungeon has been completed. I am definitely loving that. I don't know how fast your players move through different uh, rooms or different combat encounters, but I know for my group that's probably an hour's worth of travel, uh, uh, just generally speaking. So, you know, we're getting through it pretty well. Okay, and so we're actually going to build this next area out. It's a five foot opening, so we'll do that like that. And this opening is actually going to feature a door. Uh, and that door is going to be locked, something that can be picked if they have a, a thief or a rogue. Otherwise, the key is actually hidden in the library. So what do we have for door options? And uh, there we go. A stone door frame. And I think let's zoom in to make sure that we get this to work just the way we want it to. shrink it just a bit so that it's definitely a different thickness showing that it's a doorway to the players and there we go um, I send it to the back layer uh, I think I prefer it on the top actually let's keep it like that yeah perfect so if we zoom out it definitely has a different feel than the rest of our wall structures and um, there we go uh, again, readjust for size, and we're off to the races once more. Now this next room is going to be really interesting, um, because this next room is more wide open on this side, and there's a reason for that. Um, it's not going to be easy for, uh, players to ascend to the, or descend rather, to the bottom floor. Um, and again, it's the value of these dragons, and that's why. So, um, you know, the metallics do not want anyone getting in to acquire this sacred, um, uh, this, this sacred thing that they've been told to guard, these eggs. So we're going to There's just a five foot area here, and it's the same deal with a locked door. So we'll grab the same door and drop that into place. Perfect. Now, what we are going to do is we're actually going to come back to our lava, but we're going to uh, come into here. And so you can change the shape of your brush here. Um, the star effect's really good about creating things like if you're building a world, um, water, and coastal region. Um, if I was doing just a small splash of lava here like that, that would be great, but we're actually going to be doing um, a sort of sea of lava that has to be traversed. And so if I do this, um, this grid pattern here helps create more of a square effect. And what I really want to be able to do is crawl the edges without going over. So I'm actually going to shrink this down for precision. And we're just going to go straight down until I clip there, clop over, and then clop into here. And so there's going to be a sea of fire that has to be um, overcome in order to be able to get into the next area of the dungeon. And what I actually need to do is create the, there's a mound of land on both sides. And oh, we're over there. There's a mound of land on both sides just near where the door is so that, you know, someone from the party can enter on either side and that's it. So I'm going to shrink this back down. I'm just going to take the, uh, the actual volcanic rock texture, the lava texture here, and go like that. And probably like that. Yeah, so it's got sort of a, almost like it's perfect. Like it's recently cooled in that area, but only just. And cool is a 
relative term at that point. Um, every five feet, we're going to have another island of lava rock. I think the players will be able to be on these, um, you know, without uh, falling into the lava, but there will be a potential for some fire damage as you're, you know, exposed to that much heat. And then there you go. And so it's going to be athletics or acrobatics to leap from rock point to rock point to try to get across this, unless the players can come up with some other creative way to try to uh, traverse this area and get to the other side. And we'll, uh, we'll continue on with our map from there. Um, but that's sort of the final room. For, for this dungeon, at least for this map. All right. And we are continuing on. So the next room that I'm framing here is actually going to be a room where they're keeping a uh, couple of beasts that are going to be sort of protective um, and I'm still working out exactly what that's going to be. I'm thinking either something like a manticore den or something like large drakes, uh, something that feasibly the dragons are, are keeping here as pets uh, to use against any invaders. And what I, what I sort of want it to do is be that they're, they're resting. You know, the dragons have gotten I'm not going to say lazy, but complacent in their guardianship of the of the uh, the eggs. It's been a long time. It's been thousands of years, and so they're not always every day on constant vigilance. But they have their kobolds, and their kobolds are going to be uh, the ones you know sort of taking care of this this creature. Uh, but in my vision of it, the players sort of encounter the creature in its habitat here, sort of resting, and. Uh, combat ensues when the creature wakes up and sees the player characters, people that they've never seen before. So we're going to create a monster den. Uh, ooh, a straw roof. I'm thinking like hay maybe? Is there an option for that? There is. Great. So we have like the large amount of hay in the background. Um, either it's a bed for the creature, or maybe it's its food, or maybe it's where it leaves its droppings. But you, know, you have that sort of comfier area. I want to be careful, I don't want it to bleed through. We don't want to see hay in the lava. <laughs> that might just break the illusion of fire being dangerous. We don't want that. All right, and then... Uh, We'll do a couple of small bales of hay. Uh, you know, so they fit the five foot area here and just sort of bend down in this area. Um, I'm thinking a water trough would also be useful. So, um, you know, the cobalts would be bringing the creature water uh, to survive with. So, I don't know if that's those baskets, that's good to know for the future. I was thinking basin or tub. Oh, look at that. I like the brass tub. It's nice to know that they have test tubes if you want to get a little steampunk in the future. That's nice to know that we have that option. So we can do that right here. Um, let's see, do we have any water options to put in there? I don't think we do, but... Um, that's fine. If, if we didn't, uh, that's something we could add in in the future for uh, in Roll20. There are options for us to do that. Um, and so there we have it. I mean, I think that's as much as that needs to be developed. It's going to be a combat encounter room, so we don't want to make it too busy. Um, wide open areas for the party to be able to maneuver and, and fight against the creature. Um, the door for this, uh, I think we're going to use the jail cell door. Cell maybe. Let's search my door. Uh, prison. Well, you know I got close. So 
it has sort of the bar feel and the reason why I'm doing that is I would love for players to be able to see through the bars so you know it becomes almost an optional combat encounter at that point for them and um, maybe it's something where the players become their worst enemies uh, where you know they see the creature and it becomes the maybe we can tame it maybe we can make it our pet and and something that we own um, you know all the while falling into uh, a uh, known trap because the the creature's not going to be something that will listen to anyone but its uh, its masters which is to say the kobolds okay Oop. too far there we go come back up to here and is that too much of a gap? No, it does not look like. Great. And actually this works out well. Perfect. And there we go. So players can travel down both of these areas. So this becomes a hallway again if they leave the main area. Um, the very first thing they're going to encounter here is a dead end. Um, but with this dead end, I'm going to be putting the second chest. So let's go back into the catalog here. And let's grab the chest. And oh, yeah, just a little too large there. make this come forward first. There we go. And then it does not want to shrink for me. What is going on? There we go. No worries. And then we'll uh, we'll shrink that one back down. Uh, by this time, I'm sure players are going to be weary of any kind of uh, chest that they encounter, and I think that's that's good, right? It only takes one time, I've noticed with my party, um, finding a trapped chest. It only takes one time for them to open that, to realize, you know, every one of them needs to be handled very carefully, very delicately. Um, so we have yet another one that's going to be here, but this one's not a trapped chest. Um, this one actually has a purpose for it, um, and it's going to have the key for the, the door here uh, to get into the lava chamber. But it's also going to feature guards, so there's going to be kobolds inside of here, um, standing guard over that area. That's an open chamber. Yep, perfect. And then we're going to do this. Move that right there. Then we're going to do this so that if players go again through this direction, leaving it sort of funnels them into this way. Um, what I want to make it happen for, or the way, the way I want this to play out rather, is that if they come to the right first, they're going to be forced to go up and around and they have to explore at least half the dungeon. And then the same thing's going to be true down here. They have to come around. So we're going to sort of bend it in this direction so that. Um, if they want to get to this chamber, they have to go through quite a bit of this area first. Um, my goal is at least an hour of content for them before they uh, arrive at the final chamber down below. And then we have that there. Uh, 
oh, sorry. This is going to go like that before coming into this direction. And we're going to have a guardian featured over here in the corner, so sort of a mini boss. Um, First, well, actually, I guess you know what? We'll, we'll design the mini boss chamber first. So, the mini boss is actually going to be a mage, and so we want this to be sort of a mystic looking chamber. And I'm going to take this and turn that so it's like just a little bit different. Grab a third one. I'm going to place that into there. We're going to shrink it so that it sits in the middle. So there's amplifying power coming off of that. Um, red is the color because of fire, because we're in the volcano. So that's sort of the, the color palette I'm homing in on when I look at making this into, into a magical chamber. Um, and then we're going to put pillars of uh, sort of fire. Uh, I think this one would match better. Oh my goodness, it's very tiny. Yeah, there we go. In each corner. And there we go. That one came up blurry. Let's repaint it just to be on the safe side. There we go. Because um, this is going to be a, a fire mage that appears in here. So, And that's again another, going to be another combat encounter that just immediately triggers... Um, let's put another door in between these two just to logically segregate those encounters as I look at it. Perfect. So they have to open that door in order to get down into the wizard fight. There's going to be, originally there was supposed to be water here. We don't have much in terms of what we can do for, for painting that other than doing a texture. So I'm going to put a little bit of texture here. We don't have necessarily the perfect texture for it being uh, steaming water, but there is a bit of a natural spring here. So that's what we're going to sort of paint into this area here, um, steeping up from underground like a, a spring. Um, deeper on one end as it sort of flows like a shoreline to the other but it's steaming hot but good water to drink so this is where um, our, our cobalt friends would be harvesting their their water from uh, what I want to do now is add a stove to this area uh, the stove is going to be using the natural uh, heat vents in order to be able to heat up. And then we're going to put a tiny little pantry over here in the bottom. And this is the area that the cobalts would cook in. So um, they'd make food for the creature that's being stored. And they would also make food for themselves. And so uh, there's plenty of options for food. But I'm going to focus on what I think the cobalts and the dragons would care about most, which is going to be meat. And actually, let's build another table out so they have a place to put that. Um, I want it to be stone table. I don't think wood would do well for this. So let's see what we have for options here. Yeah, stone table. Kind of like the, the texture pattern on that. I think that's going to be a lot of fun uh, to work with. And so we do that. Drop it down so that it's below our walls. And there we go. Perfect. And then let's grab some food. I'm thinking meat, right? Like, that's what dragons would love. That's what um, the kobolds would really, really dig. And so we've got like a nice steak there. Whoop. Catalog. There we go. Uh, oh, ribs. Very nice. 
I think the, the chicken there would be perfect. Uh, because that's a very recognizable piece as well. So we'll, we'll put that in there too. Try it just a bit here and boom. And so the next day's meal is there. Uh, there's a source of water for the players, if that's something that is tracked. And our dungeon's really starting to take strong form here. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, but there will be a trap that triggers in this area again as well. I like the idea that there are still quite a few traps. Um, so players come through here, they get through the traps, they get to the kitchen, and they enter the chamber with the wizard. They could travel out here, fight the methods, or enter the chamber with the wizard. Uh, or they could head north, potentially go through traps, find the bunkhouse where there may be cobalts inside that are sleeping that may wake up, and that can trigger another combat before they get to the lava place. Or come down through here, uh, heading towards where the creature is. Now this open area here is a wandering monster zone where uh, I'll roll to have a number of kobolds potentially be patrolling in that area. So um, there may or may not be an additional combat after they swing through the wizard's chamber or it may be a lighter thing. And it doesn't necessarily have to be random either. That can be something that, you know, if your party is already low on HP, they're looking for a way to rest, um, you know, that could be a place to, to give them that opportunity. Uh, the same way that in the north, I put the chamber in for the library um, and armory. It's another place, again, for players if they've been through the traps and that hurt them a lot. If they've been through the Mephit fight or the wizard fight and that hurt them a lot, they have sort of these spaces where they could rest and recuperate before going through the rest of the dungeon. And then we're going to put just another storage chamber down here. And that's going to round out this map. Um, this is a table, but if you put it like this, again, it suddenly looks like it could be shelving. And for what we're going to use this for, for our, our room, is this is additional um, supplies for the creature. But if this was a map you wanted to use for your own game, this could be anything that you wanted it to be. Uh, for that purpose. I'm going to zoom in here and make sure this lines up. Perfect. Um, could even be empty. I mean, if you wanted to just have it be something that may, rec may, may represent how long the dragons have been down here without really being well taken care of. Um, and just like that, we have a map that we can bring into Roll20, adjust for dynamic lighting, and the first layer of our dungeon is complete. So like before, I'm going to edit map details. And we're going to call this level one uh, dragon soul volcano. First level dungeon dragon soul volcano. It helps if I can spell. And I'll save that map. And with that, uh, that brings this video to a conclusion. Uh, I will see you guys for our next video where we make the map for the boss fight.